wonderful and iconic people, I think, in sports marketing. Um, I interviewed him when I was at Runner's World, and I still remember the quote. And he told me, and he goes, and you better get it right. Uh, he said that for three million dollars, he owned the city of Boston for a day, and that he, went everywhere. It was fascinating. That is, that's a true statement, obviously. But, but he also understood how he would own the city and under what conditions he would own it, and how the marathon would be protected and enhanced in that process. Uh, none of the traditions went away; they were all enhanced. Everything got better. And he gave us the support we needed in a very colorful way, as well as financially, to make this race great again. When you brought in the athletes that are part of the John Hancock team, was that something that you and David discussed on how to keep their relationship? Because it was he, unique in the sport at the time. Yeah, it was something, you know, it's funny, the, uh, the organization voted for prize money, but they were reluctant to, to enter the appearance money aspect of that scenario. But John Hancock understood that's what needed to be done. David Ellis DeSandro knew that had to be done. It would be more than prize money. It would need to be support to bring the athletes here versus going someplace else. So they chose to, part of our sponsorship is to enhance that whole piece on their own, you know, with our blessing. So it, it just worked as a, as a tremendous partnership. And we talked over the years as we looked at the sport, who to, who to bring in, how, what kind of a team to assemble all the things that made it better.